Hey friends, welcome back to our chapter reading. Today we are finishing up the last two chapters of The Dragons of Blue Land. So when we left off last time, Elmer had found this family of dragons and was trying to tell them the plan and he gave them each a horn and a whistle on their neck. So let's find out what happens. Chapter 10, Escape. Boris, Boris, whispered Elmer from under the snapdragon bush. Are they all right? What's happened? Nothing's happened. Everyone's all right, and we're ready to go. I couldn't see the net, but we'll hope for the best. Did you say one of the men is called Frank? Yes, I heard them mention a Frank and an Albert. Good. I'll meet you here afterwards. I told your family you'd have to take me back and that you'd find them near here someplace. Fine, said the dragon. I can't wait. All right, now, I'm going back. Remember, as soon as you hear my cat pistol the third time... You're to make as much noise with the horn and whistle as you possibly can. Elmer turned back down into the tunnel and hurried to the big cave. Everyone was ready. Boris will be your signal, he explained. As soon as you hear him blowing his horn and whistle, you're all to blow as hard as you can in every direction. I'll yell, yell Boris when it's time to charge. But look carefully at the net before you try to pass by. I don't know where the opening will be. Ready? whispered Elmer his heart pounding so hard he was sure it must echo through the cave. Ready, whispered the 15 waiting dragons. Elmer crept up close to the net. The men were unrolling blankets and getting ready for the night. There was no moon. And there's Elmer, ready to take on the plan. Perfect, thought Elmer. He took out his cap pistol and fired it once. Then, help, help, he screamed in a gruff voice. Get me out of here! I'm trapped! The men jumped up, tripping all over their blankets and bumping into one another. What was that? Somebody's in the cave! Frank! Albert! Help! Help! yelled Elmer again. Come on, let's hurry, said the men, and they began moving great boulders off the edge of the net. So that's how they fastened down the bottom, thought Elmer. That should make it easy. Then he shot off his pistol again and cried, They got me! Help! So there's the men outside, thinking, oh my goodness, one of our friends is in trouble. The men frantically rolled away the boulders just as they began pulling aside the heavy net. Elmer shot off the pistol for the third time and ran back into the cave. Boris heard the third shot and began blowing his whistle and horn and running up and down over the meadow. As the noise echoed over the lake, the 15 trap dragons started in on their whistles and horns. Noise roared wildly through the cave, back and forth across the lake, and echoed madly around the circle of mountains. Some of the men had started off when they heard Boris. The others, who had been out to rescue Elmer, ran out of the cave in terror. Elmer shouted, Boris! and raced back through the tunnel. The fifteen dragons sh surged toward the entrance. Whoa, look at that. All those dragons ran towards the entrance to get out. They found where the men had pulled aside the net and poured through the opening, trampling out the campfire as they came. Into the sky they zoomed, still blowing their whistles and horns. Then they disappeared into the darkness, leaving thirteen men scattered over the meadows where they had fled, and three men sitting in the lake water where they had jumped. What happened? said Frank to Albert. Chapter 11, The Dragon Affair Elmer ran up to the tunnel to Boris, and away they flew long before the noise had stopped echoing among the mountains. Well, that's that, said Elmer, panting for breath and reaching for his second box of Fig Newtons. Gosh, Elmer, I can't thank you enough, said the dragon. Never mind that. I never had so much fun in my life. But you'll have to hurry me back to Seaweed City. I've got to take the train home as fast as possible. Over the desert they flew, and the wind grew stronger and stung Elmer's face. I think a storm's coming up, said the dragon. I can smell the sand in the air. Wonderful, cried Elmer. The men will have to leave Blue Land, and maybe you'll never be bothered again. Over Spiky Mountain Range they sped, reaching the outskirts of Seaweed City at midnight. How about leaving you on top of the mountain, suggested the dragon. Then I won't have to land on the ground. Fine, said Elmer, and the dragon glided onto the top of Seaweed City Monument, overlooking the center of the city. Goodbye for the last time, said Elmer. I'm sorry that I never really got to see your family. They must be magnificent. 
but tell them from me that nobody will ever know more about them than they do right now, except for your friend, our friend, the old alley cat. I'll tell her all about it. Goodbye. I better hurry home, too, sobbed the happy baby dragon. He clumsily hugged Elmer, and off he flew. Elmer finished up the Fig Newtons, saving one box for the train, and climbed down the monument. Quickly, he landed to the railroad station. He walked to the railroad station and asked for a ticket to Nevergreen City. And there's Elmer and Boris giving each other a hug goodbye. Isn't it rather late for a boy of your size to be taking the train alone? Asked the ticket agent. I suppose so, answered Elmer, giving the man $7.27. The man shrugged his shoulders and handed Elmer a ticket. I can't get used to boys these days, he muttered. By the way, there's a train in 20 minutes. Get you down in Nevergreen at noon. Thanks, said Elmer, jingling the nine cents he had left in his pocket, as if he were used to taking trains in the middle of the night. When the train thundered into the station, Elmer climbed aboard. What are you doing, running away from home? asked the conductor suspiciously. Oh, no, sir. On the contrary, I'm on my way there now, said Elmer, looking the conductor straight in the eye. Have it your own way, said the conductor, punching the ticket. Elmer slept right through to Nevergreen City. He walked up the front steps of his home just as his mother was making herself some lunch. Elmer, Elmer, you're back, but you look half starved. I am, said Elmer, hugging his mother and sitting down at the table. He ate three bowls of tomato soup, five slices of pumpernickel bread, four glasses of milk, milk, six fried eggs, and two huge pieces of sponge cake. Then he went to talk to the cat. So there's the ticket man that was talking to Elmer, and there's the conductor. It wasn't until the next morning that the dragon affair came out in Nevergreen City News. Listen to this, yelled Mr. Elevator, reading aloud at breakfast. A fantastic and unexplainable escape took place in a great high mountains of blue land late Sunday afternoon. Late Sunday night. Fifteen dragons, a wonder in themselves that they have long been believed to be extinct. And the newspaper story went on to tell about the brave men who had fought their way back through treacherous sandstorms to tell the most monumental story of our time. Unbelievers who doubt this story, continued Mr. Elevator, reading aloud from the paper, will find it difficult to dismiss the following supporting evidence of the presence of dragons in this region. Then he proceeded to read about a ship stationed off the coast of Popsicornia, which twice had sighted a strange flying beast, once with a boy atop it, and about a certain Mr. Wagon Wheel who claimed also to have seen it twice, once on the ground near his farm, and once in the air with a boy aboard, over Seaweed City, and about Chester DeWitt, a small boy who also claimed he'd seen the dragon over the city preceding Thursday evening. Lastly, there was a short bit about the conductor and the ticket agent who wondered if the boy they had seen late Sunday night could have had anything to do with the case, and so on. Mr. Elevator dropped the paper and stared at Elmer. Did you have anything to do with all this? I just don't understand your strange trips away from home. There's Elmer talking to the cat, filling the alley cat in. Me? said Elmer, choking on a piece of toast. Why, Father, you don't mean you really believe all that nonsense, do you? And there's Elmer at the table with his parents. The end. All right, friends, I hope that you really enjoyed this book. And I hope you enjoyed the whole series of books. So this one was The Dragons of Blue Land. And it was the third book in the My Father's Dragon series. So I really enjoyed reading it with you guys. And I hope you enjoyed it as well. See you next time. Bye.